This is when the fuck begins. All right, so I just finished mixing the Gatorade Miralax solution, and I just took four Dulcolax tablets. Dulcolax is a laxative. So, I guess you can say the fun has just begun. It's, it's five o'clock right now, day before my colonoscopy, and I wanna show you guys what it's like. Would you like to see that? So, the reason I decided to create this video and walk you through this, first of all, there was such a positive reception to my video where I spoke about having Crohn's disease. That's something that I kept private for such a long period of time, because as I went over in that video, being open about Crohn's earlier could have limited my potential options for either medical school or getting into residency. And for those reasons, I was very private. And, but the positive reception and, and your support essentially showed me how important it is to be vulnerable and to be open and honest with my own struggles because it helps you as well. So in this video, I'm just going to walk you through what it's like to have a colonoscopy. And I also want to share some of the mindsets and lessons I've learned over the years. It's now about 10 years since I was diagnosed with Crohn's. This is gonna be colonoscopy number five, so it's not my first rodeo. And here we go. So these are the instructions that I received. And there are a couple different ways of going about the preparation. I have done both of them. One of them is called Go Lightly, which is this not very tasty um, liquid concoction that is supposedly flavored but it's essentially what you're doing is you're cleaning the bowels so you're taking a laxative and hydrating yourself clear liquids so that when the the scope goes in it can actually see the colon walls without there being any fecal matter to obstruct view so again two different ways of doing this one is go lightly which i don't recommend and the second is a gatorade miralax solution which is much easier to take down and definitely gets my recommendation so I'm doing that right now. It's usually you start in the afternoon, day before, and you finish off in the morning before the procedure. So for the course of the day, I haven't been having any solid foods. It's a clear liquid diet. So I've been having a lot of this, which is ensure clear. Again, you can't have anything, any smoothies, anything like that, because those are not clear liquids. Those are liquids, but not clear liquids. Having a lot of ensure, having some veggie broth, having some Gatorade, things like that, water, obviously. So that's what I've been eating since morning. And now it's time for the fun part, which is the prep. It's been about an hour, and now it's time to start with this Gatorade Miralax solution. This, I don't know if you can tell, I'm actually a lot more tired now than I was about an hour ago. And I think it's because, well, number one, I'm taking in fewer calories today than I normally would. But also, you know, now that the Dulcolax is doing its thing. My body is definitely feeling it. It's taking me away from homeostasis, let's just say that. I actually do kind of like doing these bowel preps every couple of years for one reason in particular, and that's because it reminds me not to take things for granted. So I've done stuff like intermittent fasting before, and that's actually easier for me, I found in my experience, than doing bowel prep, because with intermittent fasting, you're not taking in any calories. You're just having water. And after a certain point, it's actually much easier to stick with that. Whereas if you're having a clear liquid diet where you're taking in calories, you, you actually feel more hunger. I actually kind of like that because it reminds me to not take things for granted. It's like when you travel, for example. I've been to places where we don't necessarily have hot water and pressurized showers. We're taking baths out of buckets with cold water. And that reminds me to really appreciate these warm, comfortable showers that I have at home. So this is kind of similar. When I first got Crohn's, there was a long period of time where I was not able to eat most normal foods. Super, super, super restricted diet. This essentially reminds me to be grateful for the fact that now I can eat a lot of foods. I have very few restrictions. I enjoy Thai food and Chinese food and Indian food. It's and Italian food. It's, it's all amazing, right? So this is helping me stay grounded. And I'll cheers to that. Now the party is really getting started. All right, so it's about 5 a.m. I got so tired last night after drinking the prep. 
I just I went straight to sleep. So today, this morning, you got to finish the second half of the prep and not have anything else to drink before 6 a.m. It's almost 6 now. I love waking up early, especially before everyone else because it's so peaceful. I love that, that quiet. I'm such an old man. I wanted to say that we all have obstacles in our lives, right? And that's, whether that's health or whether that's financial or, you know, relationships, whatever it is, life is not fair. We all have issues. No one goes through life smooth sailing. That being said, we have total 100% control and responsibility over how we respond and how we react, how we choose to frame these instances that are not seemingly going our way, at least initially. For me, Crohn's was obviously one of those. I think that these times that are the most challenging are actually the best opportunities for growth. So when I was in college, freshman, got sick with Crohn's, I chose to view it as the universe suggesting to me when I was deciding between computer science and medicine that I should pursue medicine and go to medical school. And that's, that could be a bunch of baloney, you know that? But that's how I chose to frame it and how I chose to view it and that gave me such a drive to do really well in undergrad and to get into med school and then to do well in, in medical school. There were some other issues that were going on at that time some financial and familial issues that compounded on top of my health issues and it just it was like this perfect storm it was to this day by far the the most challenging time in my life but I also grew the most from that and since then i've noticed that every time i have significant personal or professional growth it's during or right after a very significant obstacle or challenge it's not like it's not when I'm the happiest and life is great that, oh, I'm going to improve myself and learn all these things. It's usually when things are not going my way that I say, okay, hmm, this is not working for me. What can I change? So outlook, I think, is more important than anything else. Outlook is actually more important than what actually happens to you, if that makes sense. Right now, I could be complaining about having Crohn's disease and having to do bowel prep and getting my fifth colonoscopy, you know, at a, at a young age and the food restrictions that I have and the medications I have to be on and all these other things. But if I choose to view things that way, then that's just negativity. That's just bringing me down. It just hurts me. But if I instead view this as an opportunity for a teaching lesson or to get close with my family or to practice self-discipline, that I could take something that many other people would consider negative or not fun or just challenging and create something positive, create something beautiful out of it. So, I urge you to try to do the same. I'm going to finish this, and I'll talk to you soon. Dr. Tespe! <laughs> <laughs> good to see you. Good to see you, man. <laughs> all right, all right. You, uh, Here we go. Documenting your life. <laughs> it's going on the vlog. So this is my awesome so gastroenterologist, Dr. Tesfaye. He's been my GI doc for several years. Say hi, Dr. Tesfaye. Hello, everybody. <laughs> so he's going to be doing my colonoscopy, and he's going to show you the tools that we use. Our colonoscope. It's more of a, a pediatric size. Um, and we have an adult size. This is, so this is the pediatric bigger. size? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> now that helps us turn left and right. And then the knob that helps us turn up and down. So when I was, when I was shadowing uh, Pete's GI doc, they were saying they don't really use left and right, they just go up and down and then rotate. Is that right? For the most part, yes. We tend to use the up and down and then we torque with our arms. But you gotcha. wanted to use less torque because that's a repetitive injury to your arms. So as much as possible, ah. we want to use the gadgets that are helping us to navigate it. Very cool. So, I'm excited. Dr. Tesfaye, are you excited? Absolutely. <laughs> it's my daily life, so... <laughs> Here we go. So, procedure went well. I was on fentanyl and Versed, which are sedated... Sedation... I can't even talk right now. So, colonoscopy done. Great success. Didn't feel a thing. Just woke up back in the recovery room. 
And now since I'm on sedation, we are on wheelchairs to make sure we don't fall. I requested that they push a little higher doses of, yeah, they pushed a little bit more of these sedation mechanisms because in the past I would always wake up mm. in the middle of the procedure and I was in a lot of pain. So this time I got some pushes, was knocked out, feeling great, relaxed. <clears throat> The only downside of this is that for most of the rest of the day, I'm going to feel a little bit off. Like, my balance is a little bit off, my speech is slurred, but that wears off after a few hours. So, time to get some food. These first few bites of food are amazing. Home-cooked Indian food. Well job, Mom. And we are done. Um, it's actually... Now in the evening, I ended up sleeping a lot. So I wasn't able to record everything that happened since I was talking to Dr. Tesfai, but you know, put the phone away. Uh, we spoke a little bit more. He was actually telling me that it's awesome I'm doing this video because he wants people to know that getting a colonoscopy is not a big deal. Once you're 50 years old, it's recommended that you get a colonoscopy every 10 years for colon cancer screening purposes. And it's not the most fun thing to do in the world, but it's also not as bad as most people think. So after I put the phone away in the procedure room, you know, I laid on my side and then they gave me three medications. Benadryl, this is all through IV. Benadryl, which is diphenhydramine. Versed, which is midazolam, a benzodiazepine, and fentanyl for pain. So these don't put you under general anesthesia, this is called sedation. So you get very sleepy and you essentially just knock out. Because you're sedated, it goes very fast. So I woke up back in the, in the recovery room didn't really remember much of it at all. Felt like a few things every now and then. But overall, um, it was a great success. So I got the report back. The initial findings were no inflammation, which is great news. I'm really excited to hear that. This is actually the first time <laughs> I've had those results. So happy about that. And they always do some biopsies. So with the on the scope, there's actually like this little tool that can reach out and grab pieces of tissue. And they send that to the lab and PATH takes a look to see if there's any microscopic inflammation and that can help guide your treatment. So <laughs> the, the thing that's always really funny to me afterwards is how, is just the recovery process. I'm, I'm never thinking straight afterwards. You know, you're, you're very sedated, you can't walk straight, so they, they put you in a chair and they roll you outside to your car. And as I was getting in the car, I was talking to the nurse like, wait, I had a bag that had my clothes in it. And she's like, yes, honey, you're wearing them. <laughs> So I'm definitely, you know, I was out of it and not thinking straight. They even say on the the discharge paperwork to not sign any legal documents for 24 hours. So the first thing I did after I got in the car was of course eat some food, which was amazing. And came home and ate some more food and then knocked out. In fact, I slept for I slept for like 5 hours. I put on my eye mask, you know, one of those contoured eye masks, super clutch by the way. If you don't have the contoured one, game changer. And woke up and now I'm, I'm feeling back to normal feeling great and that's a wrap we got some friends coming over so i'll see you guys later